In recent times, I've wanted to paint a tank. So I decided to go onto Games Workshop's website and look at the Bane Blade. It's such an amazing model. It's so massive and is such a centerpiece, but it is at $170. I wondered if there were any other options that I could find, because that just was too much. So I took a look around for an STL file that might work, and that's when I ran into Nate Fama's models his broadsword super heavy tank. This thing is amazing and it was completely free. Now I needed to get Nate's permission before printing this model and featuring it on the channel because some 3D artists are a little nervous about Games Workshop striking down their creative works. Because for those of you who don't know, Games Workshop is extremely protective of their IP. So I sent Nate an email and he said yes. So we started printing right away. With how amazing these sculpts are and the fact that they're free, I am putting these links down below. First link is going to be to Nate Feynman's Patreon because this guy deserves all the love going his way. He's put some major work into these models and they are amazing. Nate, give yourself a pat on the back and maybe get a beer because holy crap dude, this stuff is awesome. And then the second link will be to his My Mini Factory. I wanted to share a little something with you, the crackle of taking off supports after a 3D print. Now I'm not gonna lie, there was a little bit of warpage, but that's okay. That's just due to me being a complete noob at 3D printing still, and I haven't tweaked or used or changed any of my settings. I'm just doing it bare bones, and you know, these prints are coming out pretty okay. Next, I assembled all my 3D prints. Now this project did take a couple, maybe two weeks, each print you see before you took about eight hours to print. I'm not gonna do all that math, but it took a long freaking time. Finally having this thing assembled and looking at it in its entirety made me realize how massive this thing was. I think it's even bigger than an OG Bane Blade, which is amazing. Now that I had an idea of the size of this thing, I decided to look at the surfaces that were bumpy and uneven and sand those down with some sandpaper and X-Acto knife. I made sure to wear a respirator during this part because it's still resin and resin is not good for your lungs whether it's in its liquid form or if it's in a powdered form. And one of my favorite things about this model that Nate has implemented is areas for magnets. This is awesome because this allows us to change out weapon loadouts and different varieties of turrets and it's super cool. So I grabbed some green stuff, mixed it together, and then placed those magnets in that green stuff because my magnets were a little smaller for this build and this ended up working just fine. Thank you. 
and now it's time to prime. I just took a basic black mecha primer from Vallejo and went about painting this in sub-assemblies to hopefully prevent any of that bright blue from coming through in any seams or cracks. This next segment isn't going to have a lot of talking because it's just a compilation. So grab some tea, coffee, a beer, and sit back and relax to the new tunes we got for the channel. Now, of course, one of my favorite things about resin prints is that they don't need plastic glue. They just need super glue. So let's get that on there and assemble this beast. So I went about applying a Zenithal highlight and then something happened. We'll let this segment explain. Hi, <laughs> if you're seeing this right now, I lost a bit of the film and I'm not too happy about it if I'm being honest because I was very proud of everything so far. I was like going through, I was editing. I was like, yeah, this is pretty smooth. I see all the spots I need to edit. I see everything I need to do. Hey, where's that Zenithal technique I use? Oh, it's gone. So. Yeah, we use a Citadel's uh, color technical Tesseract glow on top of the Zenithal highlight, which you will see. Um, it's this little guy right. Oh, wait, I'll I'll get a close up. Um, but yeah, it's extremely frustrating. I'm in the middle of building the kill team terrain, so I hope you continue to uh, you know like the video um, and subscribe. And yeah, this is just a little tidbit. I'm just I'm just riffing. It's just uh, yeah, let's get back to it. Now, after taking advantage of that Zenithal highlight, using the Tesseract Glow, really making things pop, we're going underneath with a dark green by Vallejo's Game Colors. This will give all the greens a nice gradient going from that bright lime green that seems unnecessary right now to a nice dark green shade. You'll kind of see when we tie it all together with the next color. 
I'm really trying to spray in any crack or any crevice that may be shadowed just to give a lot of dynamic value rather than just having one flat tone all across the surface of the tank. Now we're applying our medium color that'll tie those bright, bright greens and those dark greens all together. We're using a Moot Green by Citadel. You can't really tell that I'm airbrushing in these next few moments, but I am, and it's kind of a weird time lapse instead. So hopefully you guys will see the difference. Now let's add a little bit of character to this big boy. Every tank in my army has a red, stripe. We're going to apply this red stripe with some scotch tape. Now I took this tape and I ran it over my clothes so that way it wasn't as sticky because my biggest worry was it peeling any paint. This might seem like an extra precaution that might be unnecessary but I'd rather do that and not have any ripped off chips or paints than risking it at all. As you saw, we're going to be using AK's Brick Red. I ran out of Mephiston Red, which is usually what I use on most of my tanks, but this will have to do. You will also notice in this next segment that my airbrush is doing something weird. It is bubbling, and it was kind of an odd time for me and my airbrush. It, we were fighting each other, and I was cleaning it, and no matter how much I cleaned it, it was bubbling, and no matter how much I tried to force it, it wasn't working, and then it does work, and I had to cut out a lot because it was quite a mess. Also, I decided to leave in the paint peeling process because people tend to really like that on the internet and I thought I'd share that with you guys. Tell me if you enjoyed it as much as I did. Now, time for some recess shading, some darkening, and some weathering all in one little easy trick, an acrylic wash. I'm using a basic black acrylic just to apply all over, one part to like five parts water, and I'm just kind of making sure it stains the surface. I want it to look water stained, kind of like something you would see on a car after a rainy day. You could do the same thing with known oil. The only reason why I'm using the black wash is because I've done this before in the past tanks and I want to keep things uniform. Plus it's a medium I'm familiar with. All I'm basically doing with this black wash is applying it heavily, allowing it to sit for just a moment and you can't really tell with the editing, then taking a paper towel and dabbing off on any places that I don't want to be stained and repeating this process till things are darkened to my liking. And it is now time for some metallics. The majority of metallic colors you're gonna see on this tank are done with Lead Belcher by Citadel. The highlights are gonna be done by Vallejo Game Color Silver. The way I go about applying these metallics is gonna be mostly dry brushing and using an extremely worn out brush for texturing and weathering. And as you can see, I'm just taking that brush and letting it do all the hard work. By using a super worn out brush, we can get some awesome weathering by just barely hitting the edges of the tank. This is why I keep a lot of my old brushes because then we can use them again in a different project and give them life once more. So yeah, definitely keep your old brushes around.
Now we're just coming back around to hit the edges of any surfaces that we feel like light would hit with that silver just to make it really highlight and pop in the places that we need. On this part, I decided to dry brush Moot Green and Warp Storm Glow Green uh, by Citadel just because I didn't hit them with the airbrush and I thought since these are going to be inserted into the tank, it's not really going to matter either which way and we're going to wear them down so it's all going to incorporate just fine. So in this part, I did something a little different. I used Folk Arts Craft Paint Rich Espresso Metallic. That's a mouthful. I basically applied this to the barrel of some of the guns, and I also mixed a Burnt Umber ink into there just to darken it a little bit more. Usually I would use Balthazar Gold by Citadel, but I'm all out of that. So this was my last resort, and I actually really liked the way it came out. And now for the most important part of the whole build, naming the tank. I was stuck between Mastodon and Behemoth and Behemoth won. So I just took a lead pencil and drew out the last letter and the first letter to kind of get an idea of where to place things. And then I applied that brick red by AK. And I don't think I told you guys the name of my Astra Militarm army. I found the name on the Militarm wiki and I really, really loved it. And they did not have a color scheme, so I kind of adopted the name. And that is the Bush Rats. Along with not having a color scheme, the Bush Rats did not have a symbol, so I decided to make one myself. And so for the symbol, I came up with two squinty little rat eyes, a little triangle nose, two big old teeth, and several whiskers. And now that the tank is all tied into the army, let's see those glam shots.
Hi, uh, thank you for making it to the end of the video. It was a blast painting and building and making this thing. The fact that it was free and everything like that blows my mind. Also, a special thank you to Nate. He's just like, he just blew it out of the water on this, on this model. I've already said that throughout the video, but he's just done a killer job. And the fact that I can have my own Bane Blade now is so freaking cool. So yeah it's been stellar and thank you guys for liking and subscribing um it's it means as always like i say at the end of all my videos it means a lot and the fact that we're at 347 last time i checked that is freaking cool and some of the view counts on some of these videos is amazing so whatever you guys are doing if you guys are sharing or liking thank you thank you so much and thank you for going throughout the whole video and watching it and like enjoying the work that i do it means the world to me um yeah, as always, thank you for supporting me and Box Not over here. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and Reddit under uh, Not the Sandwich. Um, I will fix that name one day. <laughs> and on Instagram, The Box Not. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.